Today is Friday the 22nd of September 2017. I'm Keith War and welcome to another episode of Homeless in Titusville and today I'm being joined by what is your name sir? I'm Brian Partlow and can you spell it for me? Yeah, it's P as in Peter, A-R, T as in Tom, L-O-W. And what is your name? Danica Partlow. And your name? Gabriel Partlow. And your name ma'am? Lisa Partlow. And how old are you Lisa? 38. And Gabriel, how old are you? Twelve. Twelve. And how old are you? Eleven. You're eleven. And how old are you, Dad? I'm thirty-eight as well. You're thirty-eight. Okay. And uh, how long have you two been together? Uh, we've been together for fifteen years and married for fourteen. So you're actually married. So you're not. You're not just living together. You're not. You, no. you guys are like yeah. legally married. Yes. And tell me about the kids here. Are the kids biologically the, the two of yours, or yes. your blended family? No, nope. these are both of our children right here. So, so you guys are an intact family. Yes. Which, which, is, which is awesome, yeah. really awesome. Um, but, um, but you guys are homeless right now. Yeah, we are. Um, how long have you been homeless? Um, I guess we've been fortunate. We've only been homeless for a little over, under a week right now. Um, I wouldn't call that fortunate. <laughs> well. I mean, you're, yeah. you're not long term, but not long -term, homeless but, yeah. is homeless. Yeah, yeah. regardless of whether it's one for about minute a week. Or, yeah, so <laughs> so where where are you laying your head at night? Um, fortunately, um, our friends or our children's friends have been letting them stay with them, um, so at least they have somewhere to stay or stay at night. Uh, me and my wife have been staying in a tent. Wow. Wow. And uh, for this location that we're at right now, somebody was nice enough, the person who contacted me about this family was nice enough to let us use their living room, do this interview with this family, uh, to, to bring you guys their story, let you guys know of a family that's in need here in Titusville. Uh, this is a real family. These are real, real people that are in need in our community. Uh, so uh, tell me, what, what did you do for, for the hurricane? Like, did you guys have a place for the hurricane? Um, were you in a shelter? We, we we're in our apartment during the hurricane, but we went to Apollo Elementary for the shelter that they had there. And you didn't lose your home as a result of the hurricane. Is no. that correct? No, there wasn't. There wasn't enough damage for that to be considered unlivable. So, so tell me <laughs> how. Tell us how you did lose your home. Um, Explain that. I got behind in work. I was sick for about a week and a half, and I wasn't able to work. And due to that, and then the hurricane as well, I got behind in my rent. Mm -hmm. And I was about a month and a half late on rent. Mm -hmm. um, really, it was only a month. You know, it was half from last month and then this month's rent. And then did you have late, late fees on top of that, kind of compounding it? Yes. Yeah. The, so okay. So um, w how much was rent? Uh, it was $600 a month. Six. And, and, and how much were you making? Um, like, what was your weight? What were your wages? Um, I was making $12 an hour, but um, I haven't seen a 40 hour check in probably four or five months. So I've been averaging between 20 and 30 hours a week, if that. So, so um, <clears throat> and this is what people are going to want to know, and I'm going to have to ask you tough questions. I'm mm -hmm. going to have to grill you a little bit, and I, and I don't want you to take it personal, but. Why didn't you say to yourself, I need to leave this and find something else or maybe take on a part-time job or? Well, with the transportation issue, we don't have a vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, I was working for the company I worked for because I had transportation with that company. It's also a company that I've been working for on and off for three years, four years now. So and This is like was, a kind of small company or a big um, company? What kind of work Fairly, were you doing? I was doing uh, remodeling houses mm -hmm. and um, doing roofing on the side when I didn't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. The company I worked for does roofing and also remodels houses. Um, and the, a lot of the work that I did was out of county, you know, so I would have to have transportation to get to and from where we were going. So. How were you doing that? So the boss was primarily picking you up and, and taking uh, you around? He had a work vehicle that he would let me use to drive to the job mm -hmm. and then back on certain days. Mm -hmm. Some days I wouldn't be able to use the van or the vehicle. Um, he would bring me back and I would get a ride to wherever I needed to be in the morning. And then we would go from there. <laughs> okay, so mom, how about you, mom? Do you, do you work? No, you don't work. Have you worked? About 15 years ago. And why, why is that? Do you because of my social anxiety so bad that I can't get out of work. And what, what kind of um, problems do you, do you have? Like, uh, are you drawing Social Security disability? Mm -hmm. have you, are you under doctor's care? I am under doctor's care. 
and what what kind of things have you been diagnosed with? Um, manic bipolar, um, really bad depression that comes with it, um, social anxiety, um, lupus, fibromyalgia. And how long have you had those conditions? Um, about five years, five or six years. And what kind of medications are you on for these, these conditions? Um, Lyrica. Lyrica. Okay. They had me on um, pain medicine, but I didn't like it. I didn't like okay. the way it was reacting with my other medicine that I had to take. Right. And then for my mental problems, I have to take um, lithium, um, Van or well, clonopin, like five milligrams of clonopin. Lithium is a very potent antipsychotic medication. It is. Um, so, you, so you must have had some really serious <laughs> issues. And, and I think shaking, I shake real bad on it. And your husband was telling me that um, you got it was so bad that, that you guys had actually, or your and your physician had actually recommended possibly doing electroshock therapy. Yes. I mean that that that's like really super extreme. Mm -hmm. And and so I would imagine being this bad off, you did try to to file for Social Security yes. disability, right? Yes. And like a lot of people. You were denied, and the process is long, and all these other things. Did you did you hire an attorney, or no. no, you didn't? So, are you at that point now that you're hiring an attorney? We were concerned about not being able to afford an attorney. Um, we were just now speaking with one of our friends that said that there's some attorneys in town here that would. Well, they work do for it. a percentage of of the the back monies that the. Uh, yeah, that you would get from the government. So, so it's not really sort of you paying them. Plus, the government kind of increases the amount <coughs> that you would get in order to offset what the attorney <coughs> is getting paid and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, so you guys uh, are having a tough time here, sitting here uh, <laughs> doing our interview. So, tell me a little bit about yourself, there, Danica. What what, what kind of things uh, are you into? Dancing. Dancing. Singing. Singing. Playing. Okay. Working. 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 <laughs> really? Do you have a nine to five job? <laughs> yeah. Really? What is it? Doing dishes, cleaning. <laughs> Doing, <laughs> Doing dishes. dishes, cleaning. Okay. And, <laughs> and how? And how about you, Gabriel? How about you? What, what do you? What do you occupy your time with? Gaming. Um, making YouTube videos on my channel. Um, singing. Listening to music. He's also a very drawing, good sculptor. Drawing, yeah. sculpting. Play. Artist, wow. Okay. Thanks after me. <laughs> well, that's cool. So you like to be creative, huh? Mm hmm That's that's cool. Do you do you have any artwork that you could show us at the end of the interview by chance? Yes, in the tent I can go grab it. Okay. All right. All right. Well we will we will do that at the very end, I promise. I promise. Okay, so um uh what have you told the children is the situation right now? Um, we, we're honest with our kids. We don't like to hide anything from them. They know that we lost our apartment. We don't have anywhere to stay right now. Um, so they're coping with it. You know, I mean, they're probably coping with it better than my wife is and I am. But um, they know what's going on. We, we don't like to hide anything from them. So. You know, <clears throat> if you guys want to, you guys can go outside and I can just continue talking to mom and dad. You, you guys want to go for that? Yeah, why don't you guys go out and play? Can my friend go? No, just go out and play. Can I go in there? No, go outside and play. <laughs> here. Just well, you can, why don't you go check with her? Yeah. Or dad will give you the phone or go, something I here. I want to go in this one. one. You're yawning, Dave. <laughs> no, I wasn't. All right, take turns, guys. <laughs> okay, so that that's understandable. You know, they're, they're kids. It's a, you know, this is a tough thing for them. Um, no, because Dick is going to be a brat. She took the phone before I said okay. But you have to sit here and be nice then. And, quiet. and be quiet. Down. Be quiet. Gabriel, Gabriel go. <laughs> All right, Gabe, we'll see you later. Up your mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, so so that's a little tough. I mean, they're, they're kids. Yeah. I mean, they're kids. We can't expect perfection from them. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're not miniature adults, contrary to popular belief. You yeah. know, they, they have their own little feelings and and things like that so um, so tell me tell me like what happened when you knew things were getting bad because I, I mean this you knew you were behind you knew some you know kind of like chicken little here you knew the sky was falling yeah what did you do to, to say okay uh, we have to reach out to this organization we have to do that what did you do to try to prevent 
I attempted to, you know, contact the sharing center and places like that to see if we could get help with our back rent and everything like that. But um, we just kept getting told that because we were on a month to month lease that they don't help people like that. You have to have a year lease or you don't get help. Mm -hmm. So um, it got to the point where it was like, I, I don't have any money in my pocket, you know, and I have all this so you were money. You're going that to all I owe. these organizations that you were told <laughs> can help. And you and kept then, getting shot down. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't get help. Um, so, I, like I said, I got to the point where it was just almost like I was drowning. You know, where I I know I have to pay all this, but I don't know how I'm going to get to that point. Because even if I went to work for a week straight, forty hours or you know a forty hour check or even a fifty hour check, I wouldn't even be able to you know pay half of what we were we owed at the time. And and my landlord was not willing to work with me on the price or anything like that you know it got to the point where they said you either pay us everything you owe on the first or that's it you know I can't say here's three hundred dollars or here's two hundred dollars that's all I got this week that's what I can pay you I can pay the rest next week you know or pay on it every week until it's paid off um, which I can understand you know the, it's a it's a business you know type of deal you know so they they need their money you know right because so. they can't go to the city and say hey we need a break on our taxes <laughs> yeah. because our and in this whole domino thing you yeah. know and you can understand that because then you got to go to the police and firemen and say well these guys can't pay their rent which means the landlord can't pay his taxes <clears> which <throat> means we can't pay you yeah and then the whole system crumbles so i mean we get that you yeah. know and, and that's just the way things are in our society yeah. um so making as little as you made for a family of four because Twelve dollars an hour. That's not a living wage. I mean, there was yeah. just a, a study done here uh, earlier in 2017 that said uh, to live in Orlando and, and have a living wage was sixteen dollars and seventy eight cents an hour, uh -huh. and you were four dollars and seventy eight cents away from a living wage. Yeah. And I don't even know for how many people that was, but you had four. Yeah. I think maybe that was just for a, a single person. So, so what did you qualify making? so little money did you get food stamps did you get section eight um we had food stamps um we got a little over six hundred dollars a month for food stamps which did help us out a lot um section eight i haven't looked into it very much the last time that we tried to apply for section eight um, they said that the list was closed we couldn't even apply because there was so many people already yes. trying to apply for it and with the hurricanes and everything i'm you know not sure if it's any less Right, right. So, um, yeah. Just let us finish. I promise we'll be done real soon. We'll be done real soon. Um, so, you, so you had those issues. That's all right. Like I said, they're again, they're kids. Um, tell me about their health. You know, are the kids healthy? Are the kids on medications? Um, they both have ADHD. They're supposed to be on their medicine. A little, little evident. A little, <laughs> yeah, evident. little evident. But that's cool. Um, but they've been without their medicine for about a week now. Um, we haven't been able to get them back into their doctors to get their refills. So, so did they have Medicaid or did yeah, they have private have, insurance? They have Medicaid. Mm. So, so, so that that's the thing, you know. So a lot of people a lot of the viewers are going to be wondering they're going to go well well they have this but they don't have that and what people don't understand you know especially the people that are not in your position or haven't been in your position that sometimes you can qualify for one thing sometimes you can lose certain benefits one month to the next mm -hmm. so had you worked and gotten those extra hours to catch up on your rent there would have been a consequence because then they would have lowered your food stamps, they would have changed your qualification on your Medicare. Like, you just can't win, yeah. you can't, you know? Um, and that's, that's like a reality for a lot of people, you know, a lot of, a lot of people just don't understand that. Mm -hmm. um, so what do, you, what do you think your future is now? Like, what, 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 are, you, what are you doing now at this point? Like, um, right now we're just <laughs> trying to survive day to day. Um, have you guys called faith-based things? Have you called churches? I've, I've contacted um, one organization out of Melbourne to mm -hmm. see if um, they had a program to help people in our situation get back on their feet. And that and, was? Uh, the Friendship, I can't remember the name of it. Um, family. Family Promise. Family Promise. Family Promise. And a lot of times <laughs> they work really close with DCF and all these other things. 
and um, you know there's all kinds you'll hear all kinds of different cautionary tales by different people uh, of course um, you know I filled in with some of my experience that I had with another family that I helped where you know I told you that you know the family had agreed to do a drug test okay fine you know so they said we'll do it at an approved lab and a mm -hmm. professional and all stuff and then family problems goes oh no we want you to go in a McDonald's bathroom pee in this paper cup and then you know those they can get all these false positives mm -hmm. which they did in their situation and then they go well don't worry about it uh, and then the next <clears> person <throat> says oh no you do have to worry about it and I get an answer for all this so there are all these society things that you have to worry about are you are you worried about any of those things right now like as far as DCF things like that because you're homeless I mean are you afraid like the kids are gonna go to school and go you know we're living out of a tent and, and think to yourself yeah. like at any time well there's always that fear yeah like they're my babies <laughs> yeah yeah I mean you know and, and the, the reality is is human beings haven't always lived in structures like this okay yeah you know our society people have lived in teepees and caves and out in the oh you know and so on and so forth and I don't think just because you're poor that that means you're a bad parent you know yeah. your, your kids look well nourished to me I don't see sores on the bodies I don't see bruises I don't you know see that they're like beat up or yeah you know any of those kind of things um, if they were they wouldn't be as in your face and wanting the phone all you know they'd be hiding and timid and all these other mm -hmm. things so they seem like pretty normal kids yeah um, well, and they, they're more important to us than we are you know I mean we want to make sure they're taken care of before we're taken care of you know they were the more concerned like I said they're staying with people right now we, we, we tried everything we could when we found out that we had to get out um, that was one of the first things that was on our mind well where are we gonna let get the kids to stay you know before we yeah. were worried about us we were worried we, we need to worry about them cause right because they go to school and they have to yeah. have showers to go to school clean and clean yeah. clothes so tell, tell me about some of these your your day-to-day -day things that you've learned in the past week like tell me about that like how are you are you keeping the kids showered and clean do they yeah. have clean clothes they have um, they've got the clothes that we packed when we left the apartment but um, do they have a lot of clothes? No, but they have enough that they can wash an outfit and wear a different one that day yeah. or a couple. My daughter, she has clothes. Um, her friend, they're about the same size, so they've been sharing clothes. So. Wow. <clears throat> but uh, they're, they're able to shower where they stay and you know, they get everything that they need. They have a place to sleep and... <laughs> So I would imagine you as the man of the house, the husband, this has got to be like gut-wrenching on you because, you know, our society, we feel as men, you know, this is our responsibility to take care of our, our, our families. And then, and then mom, you know, mom, you're, you're used to keeping the house and taking care of the children and all this other stuff. This, this has got to be <coughs> one of the most trying things that have ever come up in your marriage. Is, is, is that right or has there it been anything that's been worse? No. This is. This is the absolute worst, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And and there's been a few people that you know have made derogatory term, you know statements about what's happened, you know, and and that it's my fault and everything. And and, and I keep telling them that. And in it some, doesn't in matter some ways, I'm say. sure you did go through in your mind and go, well, maybe maybe I did make these bad decisions. Maybe well, that's what I. But at the I same time. I tell them that, you know, it doesn't matter what you say to me. I've already said it to myself a hundred times over. You right, know, right. You've beaten yourself yeah, up more than anyone else can yeah. beat you up. You know, and my, I had a homeless, I, and I don't mean to interrupt you like this, but, I, but I'm going to tell you this. I had a homeless family one time tell me a couple of years ago that it was their fault that had they not paid the $200 to fix the fan belt on their car, that they wouldn't have been homeless. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, a $200 emergency within their life was it was either sink or swim over two hundred dollars mm -hmm. and a lot of people just don't make a living wage in this country anymore and it has nothing to do with you don't work hard I mean I always try to tell people you know if if you work and you make ten dollars an hour if you were to make twenty dollars an hour because because the, as the saying goes in this country the harder you work the more you make right but you're not twice as tired when you come home from work because you made twenty instead of ten yeah it just doesn't like, because if that's the case, you'd think somebody coming home from a shift at McDonald's should feel like they got a massage all day. They're yeah. I mean, because they're making minimum wage, right? So they're doing minimum work. Yeah. 
Um, but but that's not the case. Plus, you've you've just given away ten or twelve hours, whatever it was, uh, to earn this living, to to try to support yourself. Um, what what other jobs have you have you had? Like like what is your work experience? Um, I've primarily been doing construction work for the past um, thirteen years, off and on. But I've also worked in call centers before, doing customer service on the phones. Um, I've worked in sales, selling anything from vacuum cleaners door to door to direct TV packages uh, at Walmart. You know, um, but I guess the bulk of my experience would be in the customer service on, in, not telemarketing, but working in a call center. Um, I have about four years experience doing that, and then the bulk of it would be just construction. Um, I've done everything from A to Z. Um, I guess I'm a jack of all trades. So you're not someone who's <laughs> really been picky. Done. You've been willing over the years yeah, to do I've, whatever I've, it takes. I've worked. I've worked. I've done electrical electrician work for an electrician company. I've worked um, laying sewer pipe. I've worked, you know, on roofs. I've done drywall. I've worked everything. You know, it doesn't matter. I've, I've Clean toilets, you know, and replacing plumbing and things like that. So I've, I've done it all. And how about how about education? Uh, what, what, what's your education? Do you, um, high school, college? I have my GED. Okay. Um, I have a year and a half of college. Um, it wasn't really a college college. I went to uh, the International Academy of Design. Um, I'm an artist, so um, I went there for a year and a half. But um, then my ex fiance got pregnant with my oldest son, uh, who isn't with us. And that was how many years ago? Uh, 17 and a half years ago. So, so a lifetime but, ago. A yeah, lifetime a lifetime ago. ago. My oldest is 17 now, so um, unfortunately he lives with his mom. So I, that's another thing that's been a hindrance, but at the same time not, because every time I make a paycheck, child support's taken out, and it, I have to pay child support on top of taxes getting taken out. So even when I do work 30 hours, I'm, I'm still only seeing maybe two hundred dollars in a right. on a check. Right, right, so. <laughs> right. Things are really thin, and yeah. and and you can certainly understand why you you guys don't have a car because who could afford to put the gas in it? Who could afford the car insurance and and so <coughs> on and so forth and the mm -hmm. maintenance to keep that up and, and all these other things? Yeah. Um, so um, <clears throat> wow, it it's just um, I I don't know. I I just find it. Um, really frustrating to find people like like yourself and, and to see so many people that that are you know a week away from your situation you know mm -hmm. like i said we're a 200 dollar emergency you know there, there were there was a study done recently and they said that um 78 percent of americans okay in this whole country could not withstand a 400 hundred dollar emergency in their home without selling or pawning something and it, it said um 92% of people could not afford a $1,000 emergency. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are things that happen. You know, like, for instance, uh, your wife is, you told me you guys are running really thin on her medication, yeah. and there's going to be consequences when she's out of it. I yeah. mean, <laughs> so you're going to be worried even even more about her. Now you got to try to find a job. you got to keep the kids in school. you got to keep all this stuff going. Yeah. Um, how stressed are you? I'm more stressed now than I have been in a long time. I'm I'm usually a very laid back guy. I, I, she's commented so many times and gotten angry at me because I don't get upset, you know, but because I don't let things get to me. Try to logically and, think it out, yeah, problem solve. Yeah, I, and we talked about it before. I I always said that I could be in. A, there's somebody out there that's worse off than I am. But like you said, right now we are. Right now, Pretty much. there really isn't anybody. I mean, yeah. the only thing that really could happen to you to make you worse off is for one of your children to die, or your wife to die, or you. To, I mean, really, yeah. really, this really and truly is is it. Um, you know, it, it just just isn't anything worse. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing I, I'm trying to think, I had other um, things I want to ask you. Oh yeah, um, um, how about bad habits? Did you did you were you guys gamblers? Did you play lottery? I mean, did you? I might have bought a scratch off every now and then, but I I played the lottery twice when I was younger. 
and I never, never even matched one number. So you didn't up, pee, so you didn't pee even, your money away in no, the lottery. No, I didn't. How about um, how, how about a bar? If if there were a bar in Titusville, and I showed your picture, where they go, oh yeah, that's the local bar fly, and they dump about you know their whole paycheck here a week. I no. haven't. Neither of us have been drunk in nine years. Um, we may drink a beer every now and then. If I buy a six pack, it'll last me a week and a half. <laughs> you know, I may have one when I get home from work, if yeah. that. And then that's a rarity. I mean, she and she only drinks even more rare than I do. Yeah. So um, no, we don't drink. Um, we, you know, so. Yeah. Well, and I will say too, you know, uh, I've done a little bit of uh, looking into you guys, and you know, figured like, you know, but there's there's n nobody really has anything. Is there something we can do to to remedy your problem so I can talk to mom and dad? We're still on the video. Go. All right, we'll be Go with ahead. you in about, about five more minutes. About five more minutes. I promise you, Gabe. Promise turn. you. Promise you. Huh? Take your turn. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Still got it. I'm yeah. Sorry. Those are red. That, that's yeah. fine. And I'm not going to edit it out, people, because this, this, is, this is reality. This is life. This is how, how it is. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, boy, I got so many questions in my mind that, that, that come and go, and I think to myself, you know, there's going to be something somebody out here watching this video is going to say, well, you didn't ask about this, and you usually do, and, and you know, there, there's things that people are going to want, want to know, and, and um, wh what do you think right now is, like, the, the biggest thing you guys need? Like, we need a place to stay okay. um, somewhere where we're not, you know. The heat's getting to me. She hasn't eaten in three days because the heat has been making her physically ill to where she can't eat. Um, I'm eating, but I don't really feel like right. I want to eat. I'm doing it because we have to, you know, yeah. we need to yeah. have something in yeah. our, our systems. But, um, you know, I, I, I want not to interrupt you. I, I did yeah. want to touch on one thing because <laughs> it, it really bothered me last night. I thought about it, you know, because I usually come out. People don't know this behind the scenes. I usually come out and kind of do a pre-interview, you know, see what you guys are like, what your personalities, you know, are you are you guys somebody, you know, that, I mean, not to judge, but, you know, are you somebody that, that people really should be making some sacrifices for and, and helping and giving things? And, and I, I, I feel that you are, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes people, like I said, will judge about, you know, you could have done this or done that or done or got a different job or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me about something so, like, repulsive that, that it's just, it's just mind-blowing. Um, so I don't know if the people can tell on the video, but your, your wife doesn't have teeth and just, I don't no, you have dentures doesn't. or whatever. But you guys were behind on the rent. Mm -hmm. And tell me what somebody actually told you could be done for you to earn money to catch up on the rent because as i i, I think I people, that absolutely <laughs> the children are out of the room okay well uh we were told through the grapevine that somebody uh said that if we really wanted money that um the best blow jobs are given by people without teeth and that repulsed me like you said it repulsed you because i would never ask my wife to do that she would never do that she's not right. that's not us i mean to, to know, think and, yeah to think somebody would just make that comment you know it it, it sickens me you know i mean i don't I mean, maybe make they're fun the of type the, of people that I would send their wife out to do yeah. it and maybe that's why they said <clears throat> it to you because they wouldn't think twice about doing it to theirs yeah, i don't like to judge people you know they do what they do you know people out there do that that's their business you know but that's not us. We wouldn't. That's not how I would ever think about needing to make money. You know, that would never even cross my mind. So, <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm going to talk to the viewers a little bit, guys. Uh, this is this is what's going on. So there is a Facebook page called Homeless in Titusville. These guys have become members of Homeless in Titusville. A couple different things you can do. You can friend me personally on Facebook. If you see this, this video on YouTube, you can look up K-E-I-T-H-W-O-H-R, Keith War. Uh, you can send me a private message. You can join the uh, Homeless in Titusville site, and you can connect with these guys directly. Now, um, they're, they're not a circus act. They're not, 
you know, on display, on show for anybody, not going to give any locations, mm -hmm. where they're at, stuff like that. And, and certainly, you know, whether you're comfortable or, or not comfortable, you know, if, if you want somebody to directly help you or if you want the stuff to kind of filter through me, uh, you know, that, that's fine. I'll do the best I can. Mm -hmm. Or we can, you know, kind of do it through this Facebook page. Um, and uh, I'll have you guys leave a comment there and stuff. We'll probably be uh, publishing this video tomorrow. Yeah. And um, if, if any of the viewers had any any questions, um, is there is there anything? Um, or I, I know uh, is uh, before we cut. Like I said, I get so many things in my mind. Um, uh, people usually want me to ask about family uh -huh. um, because usually a kind of a sign of whether somebody's good, bad, or indifferent um, is it's kind of telling when their family will or won't help them out. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's my the mom. My mom lives in massachusetts uh she was able to put us up in a hotel room for a night for a night um that's all she could do she's on social security as well up there and um her living situation is not much better than ours she's staying with my uncle right now um and she's taking care of my grandma who's in a nursing home so but she did everything she could to help us out you know um she sent down uh twenty dollars to pay my friend so gabriel could stay with them you know, and that, but that's all she could do. You know, she actually dipped into her um, grocery money for the end of the month in order to help us out. And how so, about and how about your wife? How about your family friends? Um, Did you have anybody that that's able to do anything? My mom's dead. She your died mom's. Five, my mom died five years ago, and my dad doesn't have anything to do with me. And my sisters and brothers are up in Illinois, and they have their own life. Okay, guys. Well, um, like I said, you can reach out to me directly. You can ask me a question. Um, you can ask them uh, something, uh, you know, politely, respectfully. Remember, this this is you know uh, a real trying time for them. Please be respectful. If you have a question, ask it. I'm sure you guys will be willing to kind of you know answer yeah. any questions anybody yeah, has about you know whatever to be transparent and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so listen, I appreciate you, you guys watching, and as always, uh, see you next time. Thanks for